Hey, what's up? Gleb Alexandrov here for CreativeShrimp.com and welcome to the Hardops overview video. Hardops is one of the most popular Blender modeling add-ons by MasterZeon1001 and Team C. The Hardops tutorial was one of the most popular requests for hard surface modeling video course 2.8 update. So here we go. The warning number one is that Hops is being updated so often, so probably by the time you're watching this video, something has already changed. And the second thing is that it's always recommended to have a basic understanding of the Blender standard modeling tools, this way you would have much more fun with this add-on. So, today in this brief overview, vi brief? 45 minutes? Anyway, I consider it to be brief. Uh, taking the scope of the add-on into account, because it's enormous. And in this video we're going to tackle the basics of hardops and uh, how it can assist you in common modeling tasks such as, uh, well, boolean operations. It's uh, the area where hardops really shines, but also the other areas of hard surface modeling, um, non-destructive as well as destructive workflows, so keep watching. Ba -ba -bum. But first things first, uh, let's launch Blender. I use Blender 2.81 Alpha. And uh, here I have the Hardops installed already. If you haven't, uh, just click Install and point Blender to the zip archive with the add-on. And once we set it up, uh, we can expand uh, the tab with the add-on. And uh, here we have the documentation and other useful links. and even more importantly, here we have the key map, because obviously Hardops is a part of Blender, uh, it inherits its workflow paradigm, it's uh, very hotkey heavy, it's important to know the hotkeys. Alright, with that being said, let's take a look at the Hardops user interface. Firstly, we can access uh, the Hardops tool from the left-hand menu, which can be brought up by pressing the T key. Secondly, we can uh, go over to the top right menu, and there we have all the settings of the add-on, we will talk about that later. And from that menu we can also access a bunch of uh, regular Blender menus, like modifiers, object properties and so on, materials. That is meant to come in handy if we're gonna work in the pro mode, if, we, if we're gonna collapse the Blender interface by pressing Control space and now, we, when we don't see the Blender interface, we can pop up the helper menu by pressing Ctrl tilde. On your keyboard, it can be Ctrl and Accent Grave. Never mind. And we can move it around to make sure it doesn't block our view. Okay, and the third UI area where we can find the Hardops tools. Um, if we select the Hardops on the left, now we can go over to the top menu, right click, show tool settings. And basically what we see here is the third area where we can access the Hardops tools. We can make it a little bit more minimal by disabling uh, the display, smart shape row, display modifiers row, settings and so on. Uh, but I will keep it as it is. It consists mainly of the Hardops uh, primitives as well as the custom modifiers. Uh, we will take a closer look at that later. Now I want to show you the Quick menu, the Q menu, which replaces uh, the Blender Quick Favorites menu when you install Hardops, though it doesn't quite completely replace it, because the Blender Quick Favorites menu is still reachable, right here. Or double pressing Q also helps. So, if you press Q, you will see this pop up with S Sharpen, C Sharpen, and other operations, as well as modifiers. And in my opinion, that's definitely the uh, the main menu of Hardops, it's how it all began. Alternatively, if you prefer Pi menus, you can bring up this Pi menu by pressing Shift Q. And that's pretty much all the basic places where you can find Hardops among the Blender tools. And now the important question, uh, why bother using add-ons? Uh, let me try to demonstrate it. Like, What's the catch of Hardops, anyway? So here we have the ba vanilla Blender. Uh, to apply the boolean operations, we have to add the boolean modifier. 
then probably uh, switch the boolean object to wire to see through it and for each new uh, boolean shape we have to repeat the process and um, after a while it becomes a very tedious procedure uh, if you use the bool tools add-on it's a little bit easier but anyway there is so much repetition enable auto smooth set the angle uh, add the bevel modifier and keep doing this over and over again and apply certain settings like for example in the case of the bevel modifier the settings would be three segments profile 0 0.75 the limit method uh, should be set to angle or weight depending on what you want uh, so you got the point many many unnecessary actions and probably you have to collapse the modifier stack after that if you want to access the mesh data for example if we would like to select the sharp edges we have to do it manually or using the select sharp edges command uh, then adjust bevel width and by the way this is a completely reasonable way of using blender uh, that's nothing wrong with it uh, but after a while all these actions really add up especially if you have to deal with dozens of modifiers, literally. Because imagine that after each boolean operation, uh, the bevel modifier has to be put back into place manually, sort of positioned uh, as the last modifier in this stack, basically. So that's exactly the opportunity for the modeling add-ons, including hard ops, uh, to really shine. Essentially, what hard ops does for you is it uh, takes the common modeling operations that you do over and over again, and it batches it into a single function, like cut one shape from the other and make sure that the bevel modifier stays on top. That sounds simple, and uh, essentially this is a simple operation, but it's very elegant and it speeds up the workflow immensely. And uh, to make it perfectly clear, hard ops doesn't change the way Blender works with polygons. Uh, it relies on the Blender tools that we already have in trunk, but it's meant to assist you in using these tools in a more efficient manner uh, to save your time and to speed up the process. Well, to use a simple example that relies on numbers, uh, to do a slicing operation in vanilla Blender you need about 10 actions, where with hard ops it, it is reduced to 2. And the same holds true for the mirror modifier and the other common modeling operations that we cannot live without. Basically, we can think of hard ops as a system of uh, scripts and tools built on top of the existing 3D modeling tools of Blender. And A, that means that these two things are not mutually exclusive. You can still use them in conjunction with each other. And B, uh, that means that to better understand what happens under the hood of hard ops, uh, you have to learn and know uh, the standard modeling tools of Blender and the pool and operations of Blender. Uh, the basic understanding of how Blender works will definitely increase our odds of uh, having fun with hard ops. Hi, it's AD Burrows here. I just wanted to also chip in and just offer a little bit of information on hard ops or at least underscore some of the things that Gleb is already saying or we'll be getting into in more detail. And one of those things to underscore in this cool tool is that context is going to matter. So I'm going to hit Alt A just to deselect everything in the scene there. And then if we hit Q to open up our hard ops menu, you'll see we're going to get a particular kind of options within that menu. Similarly, if we select an object and press Q, again, we're going to get a different set of options. And if I hit shift and left click on this one and hit Q, we'll get some tools regarding the context that we're now in. So, so most likely we want to combine these two meshes in some way. And also if we happen to be in edit mode and press Q, again, we're going to get a slightly different set of options under our cursor. This is also going to be true of the shift Q menu as well. Should we prefer seeing many of our tools more in a pie kind of display? Next thing I really wanted to try and underscore here is if we hit N to open up our sidebar, you can see we have these tabs here and just at the moment I'm on this context tab in the middle and in particular I want to take a look at this workflow and we have non-destructive and destructive as options. So if we take this cylinder and let's move it to intersect with this cube a little bit, shift select the cube and then go Q and let's go to booleans and make a difference boolean. Now, if we select this cube, we'll see in our modifier stack, we have a boolean modifier with our cylinder as the object. Now, what I'll do is go shift A and add in a sphere this time. 
Let's just move it up and out of the way slightly. Control A just to apply the scale there. And then Shift select this cube. And now let's move over to destructive. Now instead of going Q and Booleans, I'm going to just use the shortcut key there, Control and Numpad minus. And now with this cube selected, we can see that that has removed the modifiers, the very essence of our destructive workflow there. We can't get that back. And also notice that this previous object has now been swept up with the destructive craze. We still have our cylinder cutter, of course, helpfully organized into our cutters collection, but that sphere has been destroyed. So I think really the heart or for hard ops objects, really that's probably more the core of hard ops. The tool set is what we have over here on our first tab, the S sharpen and the C sharpen, or we can see that under the Q menu right at the top there, the S sharpen and C sharpen. The main distinctions between these two is that the first one is really just going to operate on a normals level. And then the second, the C sharpen is going to do exactly the same as the S sharpen, but it's going to add a bevel to it. So maybe these names could have been more like, you know, N for normal, N sharpen, and B for bevel, or B sharpen. But S is pretty close to N in the alphabet, and C is next to B in the alphabet, so I guess it's close enough. And anyway, with enough familiarity, anything can feel like home. So what does all this mean in practice? So the S sharpen, what that's going to do is essentially a batch operation, which in this case would be right-clicking on this, shading it smooth, coming over to the data tab, finding our normal section, setting this to auto smooth, setting the angle, and then also tabbing into edit mode, finding any edges of an appropriate angle between faces. So if I press two to select edge mode, it would be like grabbing these and then going control E, marking them as sharp, and also going control E, and then setting an edge bevel weight, which we can check out in our item tab here, where we have our mean bevel weight. Everything that I just did there would have been done with a single click with just the S sharpen. So let's go control Z a whole bunch of times until we get back that faceted looking cutout there. And then we know we're back. And then let's come back over to hard ops, uncheck our auto smooth, just to kind of reset the mesh and then go Q and then S sharpen. All of those edges of a certain angle have been tagged sharp that we would have to do manually otherwise with our mark sharp and also the edge bevel weight for those same edges have been all set to one. Notice how on this face the shading doesn't quite look right on it so if I go alt a and zoom in here you can see the problems that we're getting is because some of those edges the angle between the faces weren't quite extreme enough to be picked up. If we go back over to our settings here and take this down to something more like 45 and then go Q and then set S sharp again. Now those extra edges are being picked up. And as per C sharpen, I'm just gonna jump into this cube and cylinder combination. Go control minus on the numpad. Actually, let's undo that with control Z. And instead of being destructive, let's be non-destructive. Control minus on the numpad again. And then let's select our cube. And now instead of the S sharpen, let's go the C sharpen. So again, it did all that normal goodness, but it also, if we take a look at our modifiers, we've now got this bevel modifier. And in addition to all of that, probably very crucially to note is that also we have the Boolean modifier being applied. So if we tab into edit mode here, you can see we can actually get access to all of these verts now. And if we grab this cylinder and move it around, you can see clearly it's not going to have any effect. Another aspect of the core workflow of hard ops is the idea of steps. And so what we need to do is ready our mesh. So if I go Q and then go to step, we can see down here, our step operator. Those are the settings we've just used. And we have this hide mesh option, which is referring to hiding the mesh once we're in edit mode. But as you can see, that actually hasn't happened. All our mesh is there, visible for all. And the reason that this isn't working right out of the gate in this case is because we need to set our angle to weight. So that would be in essence to do with the bevel, the limit method, instead of it being angle needs to be set to weight. So let's try that one more time, Q and then step and we could see that actually automatically switch that over for us. And if we tab into edit mode now, everything is hidden. Now, if I tab back out into object mode and let's add a companion cube, let's put this towards the back here, shift select the larger cube and then control minus. We've cut out of it and it's placed the Boolean first in the queue for us. And now what I'd like to do is give a few more edges and definition to this actual cutout. So I'm gonna go Q and then let's use the C sharpen. 
Let's press Q again to change our bevel width. And what we can do now, thanks to the stepping, is only control the bevel width of our new shape that we've cut out here. So let's just keep that bevel amount quite tight like this. And so what's happened if we tab into edit mode and press Alt H to unhide everything, and then just press Control E to open up our edges menu and then just select clear sharp so that we can see where we have bevel weights very clearly. We can see these blue edges here, which are an indication to us that they have some bevel weight. So if we come over to our item tab, you can see there's our bevel weight of one. And so thanks to the bevel modifier being set to weight, this bevel modifier is only going to affect those edges. Finally, what I'd like to do is just make a quick note that this icon here, the hard ops icon, the color of it is helping us to determine what kind of mesh we have. So with this blue, that is an indication that we have created a step on this. So a step up of the amount of bevel levels, I suppose you could say. This mesh over here was used as a boolean, and so we can see it's set to green, and this mesh as well should be set to green. If we create a new mesh, this cube here, you can see that that's basically grayed out. It doesn't have a color yet, but if we were to actually just keep this clear and then go Q and then let's say C sharpen, we can see it turns orange to show that we are in process of using hard ops on this cube now. All right, so that's it from me. I'll pass it back over to Gleb. There's just a few things I wanted to underscore about the hard ops tools. Now let's take a look at the destructive workflow that we can use with hard ops, uh, because we can use both destructive and non-destructive. Let's take a look at the destructive first. If we press Q, we will see the C sharpen and S sharpen options in the quick pop-up. C sharpen means that hard ops will automatically add the bevel modifier and will put it into the angle or weight mode, depending on what you have set up in uh, the settings tab within workflow. Uh, I'm gonna switch it to weight. So after running the C sharp command, what actually happened is that uh, the sharp edges above the certain threshold were marked as sharp and were assigned the bevel weight of one. So we don't have to do it manually. Now we can go ahead and, for example, bevel one more edge uh, manually through the edit mode. And then I'm gonna apply the mirror and mirror it on the X axis and probably mirror it one more time on Y. And we can use two types of mirroring. Um, the first one on the left is the modifier. The middle one is bisect and the right one is symmetrize. I used the modifier one. And uh, now we can play with uh, the Boolean cutout operations, but instead of using the quick menu for running the difference operation, I will just hold control and click on the red dot. That will quickly set up the Boolean modifier for us. And once we're satisfied with the placement of the shapes, we can go Q, C sharpen. And as we have already noticed, uh, the C sharpen command will apply all the Boolean modifiers that we have, uh, but at the same time it leaves the bevel modifier intact, so it's a pretty smart thing. The big advantage of using C sharpen is that it just saves us some time to do other things, like slashing. Uh, shift click to select the other mesh, Q, slash. So we just did uh, the slashing or slicing operation. And now we can clean it up by pressing Q and selecting C sharpen to apply all the Boolean uh, stuff we have. And another cool optimization is that the plugin created the cutters collection for us. So we can, for example, turn the visibility off and on uh, to quickly get rid of uh, the cutters in the viewport. All right, next I'm gonna press Q and select step. Uh, that will essentially bake all the bevels we had but what exactly do we mean when we say baked? And what is this step thing? Uh, first, let's make sure that we are in the weights mode as opposed to the angle mode, otherwise step won't work. So first I will go C sharpen and notice uh, how the bevel modifier has been added. Then I'll adjust the bevel width how I like it. Uh, let's make it pretty wide. Uh, but what if you want to add another, say, chamfer of a different width? What do we have to do? Because out of the box, if you apply C sharpen and then try tweak and bevel width, you will end up adjusting all the round edges at once. But how to customize it a little bit? Right, that's exactly what step is for. 
let's go Q, select step, and right after that, if you try tinkering around uh, with the parameters of the modifier, it practically it won't react because uh, the geometry have been frozen or hidden or baked, whatever you call it. Now, if we move on to carving yet another shape, and uh, never mind the shading issues, we'll fix it later. And now let's press C sharpen and adjust the bevel width. It will beautifully isolate only the region of the model affected by the last Boolean operation, while the rest of it will be protected from any unwanted consequences. If you jump into the edit mode right now, you'll notice that only the newly created part of the mesh is live, while the rest of it is inactive. And this uh, can be a recursive or rather iterative process. We can use as many steps as we like, that is, in a reasonable manner, before everything falls apart. But yeah, this is step. Step is useful. So now, after running yet another uh, Boolean cutout or whatever, we can use uh, a new bevel modifier with the new bevel width and that will not touch uh, and screw up the previous bevels. So let's see how it works. So here we subtracted the, this cylinder from our main mesh, and after we hit C sharpen and jump into the B width mode, uh, we can adjust the bevel of this new cutout. And actually, in real world workflow, this is super, super useful, because this way we can iterate between different levels of bevels, uh, this certainly gives us a little bit of this smart non-destructibility, even within uh, the framework of the destructive workflow offered by Hardops. Also, let's pay attention that the angle of the second bevel is 60. Uh, it should be higher than the angle of the first one. Do not accidentally catch at the geometry created by the first bevel. What I find to be extremely interesting about the destructive uh, sub-workflow within the hard surface general workflow is that we can mark any edges we like as sharp uh, and control the beveling effect in this way. In other words, by using C sharpen that collapses the modifier stack in a smart way, uh, we have an access to the mesh data at any point in the workflow, so we can tweak uh, the bevel width of the edges or simply stretch the vertices however we want it. So that was the basics of the destructive workflow, uh, but how about the non-destructive workflow that utilizes modifiers? Let's take a brief look how Hardops deals with that if we want to use the non-destructive means of modeling. Uh, if we select an edge, we can go Q and then add the bevel modifier and it will pick up this exact edge, which is awesome. And now I will press Alt X and add the mirror. So because we already have one bevel, we need to hold the control key uh, before adding the second one. And if we hold control shift, it will add the second one and will set the angle to 60 which is also worth mentioning. And I think we can devote a few minutes of our time uh, to talking about this feature. So for the first bevel modifier, you just go add modifier, bevel, and you're good to go. Hardops will set it up for you. And um, uh, if you want to tweak it, just go add modifier, bevel once again, and it will jump straight into the tweaking mode. Uh, the plugin memorizes uh, the last bevel modifier used and forwards you straight to its settings. But if you want to add the second one, you need to hold control before clicking on the bevel icon. That's pretty important to keep in mind if you want to use so-called bevel stepping. And you know what? I will fix uh, the auto smooth angle. Let's bring it up to 60 because it, it was driving me mad. So here we have bevel uh, number one, bevel number two. But what if we want to add the third one into a mix? First, I'd like to show you what happens if we uh, just follow the procedure bluntly and hold control once again, and add, add, add the bevel modifier. And right away, I see that something weird is going on. Uh, I don't want the previously processed edges to receive one more level of beveling. And clearly, uh, that's what's happening here. If you pay attention to the left corner over here and some other places. So how can we get around this issue? 
Actually, that's pretty easy. Uh, let's uh, repeat the steps, but this time let's hold Control Shift before clicking Bevel and see what happens. Basically, now we added the third modifier into the stack and let's name it accordingly. But this time the angle within the limit method was set to 60. Um, that's important to keep in mind. Uh, if you want to use consecutive bevels, uh, you need to make sure that the angle of each consecutive bevel gets higher and higher. Otherwise, it will pick up the previously affected edges. So as you can see, even though there are some shading artifacts here and there, not related to this particular problem, in general now everything looks proper. Now back to our mesh, and let's say a few words about the sword bevel last icon. And uh, this icon is super important to keep on uh, if you want to deal only with the highest level of bevel, which you probably do. So let's see how it works. If you add uh, the third bevel modifier, and don't forget to hold control before doing that, and set the angle to 60 over here, and we uh, put it up to 60, only to avoid accidentally messing up with the uh, already beveled edges. Otherwise, it'll be a mess. So uh, this may seem complex, but after you do it a few times, it will turn into habit. So after cutting the cylinder, we can already see the magic of uh, the automatical sorting of the modifiers. Uh, uh, this icon turned on helped us to maintain uh, a certain modifier order and make sure that uh, the bull shape is positioned above uh, the bevel modifier, but only above the last bevel modifier. It may not seem like a big deal, but it is a big deal. That is kind of a non-destructive bevel stepping, which is absolutely terrific. I love it. Honestly, this feature alone just blows my mind. Uh, it kind of single-handedly takes the whole Boolean business to the next level. It, it, it's just so much easier when you don't have to pay attention to how the modifiers are being sorted. Uh, it just does it for you. And while we are on this page, I want to show you the circle array modifier for no particular reason, other than that it's cool. Uh, we can manipulate it using the bluish uh, dots in the user interface. And if we control click on the dot, we would see the menu with additional settings. It just makes dealing with the circular arrays so much more enjoyable because you don't have to set up any empty objects and binding to the modifier and do all that stuff and returning to the purpose of the non-destructive workflow and why it's beautiful. If you hold control, you can adjust all the bevel modifiers on the fly by clicking on these bluish dots. Uh, to be able to see those dots, you need to have the hard ops tool icon enabled in the left tool shelf. And if we hold control and click the dot, we can adjust uh, the segments of the bevel and so on. We, it's just a quick access to the bevel modifier settings. And yet another thing that I desperately wanted to show is this blue dots that we can click uh, to quickly select the bull shape associated with this dot. I think it's pretty elegant. Uh, but first you need to hide all the boolean shapes. Uh, for example, keep it on the separate layer and uh, hide this layer, or should I say the collection, because in 2.8 we no longer have layers, obviously we have collections. So the biggest selling point of the non-destructive pipeline is uh, being able to see the entire creation process and essentially go back in time or go up the modifier stack to the beginning of the process. For example, to tweak something about the first bevel width or whatever you want to do. Um, but the biggest con is that you don't have a direct access to the mesh geometry. Or to put it differently, you have to collapse uh, all the modifiers to just tweak a vertex. And sometimes we need to intervene and tweak a vertex. That happens. But let's return to the cool things for a moment. I want to show you yet another method of finding the Boolean object. Q object scroll and uh, just roll the mouse wheel and <laughs> this way we can quickly associate uh, the boolean object with the boolean operation and find exactly what we need. Alternatively we can use cycle booleans to solo the uh, boolean modifiers and to cycle through them 
but in my opinion, uh, it's pretty hard to tell what's going on here, uh, because usually Boolean operations evaluate uh, the entire modifier stack, so it could be much easier if we use the additive scroll instead. As Jerry shows on his channel, this feature is incredible for recording GIFs, like with, with process, and should I say that it does it for me? Like if you can record cool GIFs or whatever, count me in. And uh, if that's not enough, uh, we also have a nice feature uh, that allows us to scroll through all the modifiers. How about that? All jokes aside, I think uh, once in a while that might come in handy for the debugging purposes. All right. And while I have your attention, hopefully, I would like to recommend you to check out the official documentation of Hardops. It's, uh, it may seem a little bit overwhelming, but if you take some time to study it, 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 it will, you will benefit greatly from it, I believe. And uh, obviously, Jerry's channel is here as well. There are hours and hours of videos there. Jerry is very prolific with his content. So these two are definitely the go-to places. All right, but can we go destructive again? And for what purpose? Say, if we hit the limitations of the non-destructive workflow, um, there are cases that when uh, we just cannot control the bevel uh, as we want it. This edge right here, uh, it's nearly impossible to, to just make the bevel modifier pick it up properly. Because if we take the angle to low, it starts to fall apart and uh, take it too high, and it just doesn't see the, the, this edge. What we can do is delete the last bevel modifier in the stack, uh, then I'm gonna apply the modifiers, and uh, reapply the C-sharp. Because yes, we can go back uh, to the destructive version of the workflow if we wish, there could be different reasons uh, of doing that, actually. Uh, for example, uh, seeing the mesh artifacts that cannot be fixed in any other way. Or maybe you just want to control the sharpening of the edges manually. You want to fine-tune something, like here I'm selecting these two edges, uh, Q, set as sharp, and bam, we have reinforced this part of the mesh and I'll S-sharp these edges as well. The point of this is usually to regain the control over the difficult modeling situation that gets out of hand, or alternatively, it can be a matter of personal preference if you don't want to tinker around with uh, dozens of modifiers. You can just collapse the wave function, so to speak, of this quantum modeling realm, goodness gracious, um, after each Boolean operation, to make it a little bit easier to track uh, what's going on in this, in this scene. But let's stop here for a moment and talk about why the intermediate Boolean cuts look awful, uh, why the shading goes crazy. Well, I mean, uh, before applying the C-sharp command, uh, that sorts it out. Well, there are two reasons why it happens, and we definitely can try to make it a little bit better. Uh, first, let's visit the hardop settings. So here we can see that the HN button is pressed, uh, that means hard and normals, and the weight button is pressed as well. What that tells us is that hardops is using the hard and normals feature of the bevel modifier to maintain the good consistent shading. And in turn, that means that if we rely on the hard and normals, uh, we need to bevel those edges first, and because we are in the weight mode, we have to assign the bevel weight somehow to these edges, and that means we need to use the C-sharp command uh, to collapse the mesh and see those edges that have to be beveled. A slightly different approach would be to deactivate hard and normals in the settings and press the WN button instead, which is weighted normals. To make it work, uh, we have to add the weighted normal modifier and by the way, we have a big tutorial about it uh, in the updates, 2.8 updates to the hard surface modeling course. So now we have the weighted normal modifier that will hopefully help us a little bit to fix the uh, shading during the intermediate steps. So we can see that uh, it's slightly better, but it's not perfect. What we need to do now is switch the limit method of the bevel modifier to angle. 
This way, even before reaching the point of no return, uh, applying C sharpen, we would be able to benefit from a decent shading. So let's test it out. If we carve uh, this cylinder out of our mesh right now, even before going C sharpen, uh, we would notice that shading behaves in a pretty consistent, normal way. But having said that, I need to say something opposite. Uh, that in some situations the weight mode gives uh, way more control over the beveling and just to keep going and ob obtaining a higher degree of control over the S sharpening and beveling I will switch it back to weight mode. Uh, this way we can be much more precise with what we do with the geometry. Uh, if we see the problematic parts of the topology, we can slide vertices around, uh, set uh, the edges as sharp, dissolve the certain edges that break the edge flow that we try to establish, and do that sort of stuff that is uh, associated with a traditional uh, modeling tool set. Uh, the difference is that uh, in this case we have the bevel modifier uh, sitting on top of everything we do, so we need to account for that, and we need to account for the fact that probably if you use uh, hard dobs, you orient yourself to use the boolean operations more frequently. But anyway, there is always a possibility of uh, working destructively and manipulating mesh on, on a primitive level, on a basic level of vertices, polygons and edges. These things are not mutually exclusive, that's what I want to say, I think. And not only that, but uh, cleaning up the mesh after boolean operations uh, is a routine practice. It's like bread and butter. At least if you're into one of the workflows that involve boolean operations at any stage, there is no chance you won't have to intervene and keep fixing uh, the shading issues popping out here and there. That's just impossible, so it's better to get used to it. Hubs have this clean mesh operation that helps a little bit. It's just two sliders, uh, the limited dissolve angle and the merge vertices uh, threshold. And it does exactly uh, what it advertises. So here I'm using the clean mesh operation to, well, to clean it up a little bit. But sometimes uh, you want to do things manually. For example, I'm pressing G twice to slide vertices away from each other. And uh, if we have the near miss vertices, we can use merge by distance command. And the point of doing all these things, sliding vertices are, uh, away from each other and so on, is to allow the bevel modifier breathe. Here I'm selecting a bunch of vertices, Alt M, and merging them at last vertex, at the active vertex. Then I'm pressing GG again uh, to slide vertices. Yeah, really, it's better get used to it. There is some element of routine included into any kind of fascinating workflow. It's extremely important to develop a little bit of a tolerance towards this type of boredom. I realize that sounds pretty awful. Alright, hopefully we have outlined some of the core features of hardtops. Uh, now let me mention some pretty useful stuff that isn't the core features, but that still are awesome. So one of the things that resonates with me is the direction hardtops have taken in relationship to procedural modeling. The new smart primitives, um, the new custom modifiers like 2D bevel and so on. It's nice to see how you can quickly iterate through these things and sketch up the basic shapes that can be tweaked afterwards using the new user interface, these bluish dots. That is pretty convenient, especially for blocking out the big and medium shapes that otherwise would have been modeled in a completely different, uh, more destructive way. All right, fine. And among other features that I would like to cherry pick uh, is definitely quick lattice. Who wouldn't want to set up the lattice modifier in one click? It have always been uh, one of the most tedious, unnecessarily tedious things in Blender. I mean, the lattice modifier. Uh, and it's such a relief uh, when you can just set it up in one click. The other feature that resonates with me is sphere cast. It's meant to produce uh, the spheres with a good topology as opposed to the default spheres with uh, the end pole at the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. Among other features worth mentioning, I think, uh, is the Alt-V menu. 
uh, with useful things like face orientation uh, that you can use to quickly check whether some of the polygons have been flipped. So you can sort it out and flip it back. And another thing that I don't see myself using very often, but which is pretty cool anyway, is the edit mode operations. Um, so under the Q menu operations, we see a bunch of things like grades or panel for quick paneling effects or the fan favorite. And if you used loop tools, you would know this one is circle. Basically, you can quickly turn any vertex into circle uh, for punching the circular holes in the geometry. So this one is definitely pretty useful. And lastly, I want to say a few words about box cutter and kit ops. Let's start with box cutter. In brief, hops is a tool of systems and box cutter is definitely one of the tools from that ecosystem meant to be used in conjunction with hard ops, even though it's a separate plugin, if that makes sense. So practically that means uh, that these tools are integrated in, in one sort of general pipeline and they're complementing each other. For example, after each box cutting operation, we can apply C sharpen. There is no tension between those tools, but at the same time, each of those add-ons can be used separately. I hope that explains the relationship between those tools. The same holds true for the kit ops, which once uh, was an integral part of hard ops, but then it was promoted into a separate product, uh, which has a free version, by the way, with the classical inserts of hard ops. So I thought I would mention it as well. Uh, the point of kit ops is uh, pretty simple. It's meant to be used to add quick details, to insert stuff. So the process looks like this. Uh, you can select uh, the detail and then press insert. And after that, uh, move it into place and scale it up or down. And in some cases, C sharpen would be required uh, to sort out the modifiers. Alternatively, we can find it under the Q menu. Kit ops. This plugin occupies the same niche as decal machine. Uh, that means if we break our model into three sort of levels of details, large, medium and small, kit ops most likely would be used to add the small details. And then again, it integrates into the hard ops ecosystem pretty well. Uh, we can use the mirror tools, for example, to mirror the inserts to the other side of the mesh. Shift click the main mesh, Alt X and then choose the axis that you want to keep and ta-da! So to quickly sum it up, uh, Hardops is a modeling assistant, box cutter is used to cut boxes and KitOps is meant for inserting things. Okay, and the last but not the least important feature for those of us who love visualizing stuff and that pretty much all of us, I mean, who doesn't love visualizing, <laughs> uh, is the quick render settings like EV high quality, EV low quality, the quick material presets uh, that you can see by pressing Alt M. That is just the icing on the cake. You know, nowadays it's not enough to just model stuff. Uh, you have to know how to present it. So from that point of view, this is pretty useful. All right, folks, that was the brief overview of Hardops, the modeling add-on for Blender by Team C. Hardops is a tool meant to assist you in the common hard surface modeling operations, such as boolean ops, sorting the modifier stack, cleaning up the mesh, you name it. In order to make most of Hardops, it's recommended to have at least a basic understanding of uh, the common modeling tools of Blender. But once you have this foundation in place, Hardops uh, can speed up the modeling workflow a lot, just like other awesome 3D modeling add-ons for Blender. If you want to learn more about Hardops, I would encourage you to check settings, Hardops learning. You'll find a bunch of uh, useful links there. The Hardops documentation, for example, that's a treasure trove for the general uh, modeling knowledge as well as the specific functions of uh, this add-on. Then there is, as I have already mentioned, uh, the Master Xeons 1001 YouTube channel with a bunch of time lapses, tutorials, other useful stuff. For inspiration and references, you can check the user gallery on Pinterest. That's pretty exciting. Then there is a Discord server, also worth checking out. 
And if you feel like you want some pizza delivered right to your front door, check the pizza ops. My name is Gleb Alexandrov, uh, thank you for watching. Oh, and by the way, this was one of the tutorials from the free 2.8 update to the hard surface modeling in Blender video course that you can find on creativeshrimp.com. Thanks for watching.